Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, May 30th, 528 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets mixed to lower. July corn futures unchanged at 604. December corn down three and a quarter at 531 and a quarter. July soybeans down 12 and a half cents at 1324 and three quarters. November soybeans down 12 at 1177 and a half. July Chicago wheat down nine and a half at 606 and a half. July Kansas City wheat down 16 and three quarters at 802 and a half. July spring wheat down 11 cents at 8.07. Hope you guys had a nice three-day weekend. Mackenzie, let's uh, start off with weather. This is going to be something we start off with a lot here over the next uh, couple of months. Weather forecasts for the central U.S. Corn Belt are dry this week. Over the next seven days, the vast majority of the central Corn Belt will see little to no rain. An unexpected storm system, however, drop, dropped rain over parts of southern Minnesota this morning. Heat is expected later this week. A good chunk of the Corn Belt will see temperatures in the 90s by Friday. The government has issued a hazard, a hazard outlook indicating the potential for rapid onset drought risk in parts of Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio. This morning's longer term GFS model indicates that rain will return around June 11th. Rapid onset drought risk. Um, this is a big chunk of the Corn Belt right here, and this was just issued yesterday uh, by the government. So this is a government uh, possible drought risk warning um, so the forecast the way i see it there were not a ton of changes versus friday we're still looking at mostly dry uh throughout the corn belt here at least through the next 10 days the uh the, the minor shift if there is one is this gfs which again goes out to like the 14th of june and you've got a whole bunch of rain introduced for iowa for minnesota uh, for missouri you've still got a lot of illinois indiana and uh, Ohio, uh, say southern Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, certainly on the dry side here. So even with this weather wetter, uh, forecast in the extended period for a lot of places, um, it's still not wet for these areas that could see this rapid onset drought, I guess. So I'm still reading this forecast as being kind of friendly. Guys, if, this, if there was a big bearish shift in the forecast over the weekend, um, the corn market would be down hard. Uh, the soybean market is kind of interesting because it hasn't been able to rally as much um, on this. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with export demand concerns, this big Brazilian crop, all that sort of thing. Um, but the corn market has reacted and it's really holding together okay here um, to start off the week, certainly. If you guys are not already subscribed to our premium content, you sure need to do so. Joe, tell me about some recent content that you put out. Tons of weather content this time of year. So uh, yesterday, Mackenzie, we started doing our pre-open uh, weather videos, which will be out uh, most weeks on Sunday afternoons. Yesterday was a Monday, of course, because of the holiday. But these are going to go come out. Um, before the market opens, about 5.30 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Central Time, uh, in that time frame, uh, typically on Sunday nights here for the next couple of months. Um, we run through the weather, uh, very quickly run through the changes in the weather forecasts versus Friday and what it means for the markets. Um, last week, we uh, talked about our our crop scare event kind of ideology and some of the target orders uh, that we're working here in, in the cash market um, in terms of, of corn and soybeans, what we're looking for um, if this crop scare event continues. And then uh, on Friday, I think uh, this was Friday's video, we talked about weather and markets and just how I like to handle weather and markets and marketing. Uh, it's not nearly as complicated as you guys think it is. Um, if you want to see the premium stuff, guys, those pre-open weather videos are the most popular videos. They always have been ever since I started started doing this, go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up this morning. Um, this is a $50 per month subscription. You can cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. It takes about one minute to sign up with your credit card on your phone or computer this morning. Uh, give that a shot, guys. Large money managers are net short the corn and SRW wheat markets. CFTC released weekly commitment of traders data on Friday. During the week ending May 23rd, the funds were net sellers of 10,000 contracts of corn. They were net sellers of 21,000 contracts of soybeans, and the funds were also net sellers of 6,000 contracts of SRW wheat for the week. You probably saw some buying uh, among the funds in the corn market, in particular late last week. I think the estimate as of Friday's close was that they were probably still short. 
80,000, 85,000 contracts of corn. So if, if the funds are scared about this uh, weather situation as it relates to the corn crop, they've got some more shorts that they could cover. Uh, funds are about flat, maybe slightly net long soybean market in real time and very heavily short the SRW wheat market. So not a ton of changes here, but you see there's just not, not a ton of uh, length here in net um, across any of the grain complex really. A Russian drone damaged infrastructure in Ukraine's Black Sea port of Odessa on Sunday night. The full extent of the damage has not been reported, and it is unknown if the damage will impact grain exports. Ukraine is only able to export grains and other food items as part of the Black Sea Grain Deal through ports in the Odessa region. The Black Sea Grain Deal was extended for two months back on May 17th. Uh, there apparently is nobody trading grain who cares about this at all. Uh, there was a new wave of Russian airstrikes on Ukraine uh, that began Monday or yesterday. So the situation appears to be escalating in terms of the war, which is something that a lot of people had predicted or projected. So I don't necessarily uh, know that this is surprising by any means. And uh, on to other news that is not surprising. Russia's not happy about the grain deal again. Yeah, once again, they are threatening to end the Black Sea grain deal. On Monday, Russia warned the West that the deal may be terminated. Moscow is demanding a UN agreement meant to remove barriers to Russian grain and fertilizer shipments be fulfilled. The agreement was reached at the same time as the Black Sea grain deal was back in July of 2022. Russia's foreign minister recently said that the agreement had not been fulfilled at all. Russian exports of food and fertilizer are not are not subject to Western sanctions, but Russia claims they are hindered by restrictions on payments, logistics and insurance. We probably could have just used like similar copy for this story for the last six months, and it hasn't yeah. really changed a whole lot. Like Russia says the deal isn't fulfilled. Russia threatens the deal. Um, Russian, there are no sanctions on Russian fertilizer and food, but you know the the uh, surrounding sanctions still impact this stuff. Uh, nobody cares anymore. We're going to talk about this probably more as the deal approaches the extension date here in whatever it is, six weeks. Uh, but for the moment, no, the, the wheat market, the corn market, not concerned about this at all. Brazil's corn crop is getting larger. Well-followed private group Ag Rural estimated the country's corn crop at 127.4 million metric tons, up from 125.1 million metric tons previously. Harvest has just begun. The group estimates that the crop was 0.8% harvested through Thursday versus 1.2% last year. Harvest just getting started. I think one of the groups last week had a number that resembled like a 130, which is toward the higher end. Um, there is still some of the crop that's at risk for like, you know, late season uh, freeze because it was planted late. I don't know if that's a big concern. The market doesn't appear concerned to me. So Brazil harvested a huge soybean crop. They're in the process or just getting started harvesting uh, what is probably going to be a record corn crop. So uh, big crops out of Brazil continue to be kind of a negative headwind for uh, U.S. grain markets, certainly. A U.S. debt ceiling agreement was reached over the weekend. On Sunday, President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy signed off on an agreement over the uh, U.S. debt ceiling. If passed, the deal would suspend the $31.4 trillion debt ceiling until January 1st of 2025. The agreement will need to pass through Congress by June 5th to avoid a default on U.S. government debt. Some Republicans claim there are not enough cuts in the deal, while some Democrats think Biden made too many concessions to the Republicans. The initial reaction from financial markets has been positive, but some investors are concerned the spending cuts could inhibit U.S. growth. Yeah, the stock market seems to like this. The S&P is up 25 points this morning ahead of the cash open. Um, the Dow Jones is up 80. Um, Bloomberg reporting this morning that there's at least 10 uh, no votes among GOP uh, House members. So I don't know exactly how this is going to work. It seems like there are members on both sides that aren't necessarily thrilled about the whole deal. But I don't know. The market's reacting as if it's a done deal. Um, I don't know or really care which side got what they wanted. Um, the debt clock continues to uh, push forward, guys. Mackenzie, what did the cattle market do Friday? So cattle futures were mixed on Friday with live cattle futures closing an average of 49 cents higher. Feeder cattle futures closed an average of 79, of, excuse me, 75 cents lower. 
Um, cash cattle trade was fairly active last week. Cattle in the north traded between 180 and 182, which was three to five dollars higher compared to the week before. And then trade in the south was between 170 and 171. That was up a buck from the week before. Box beef prices were up on the week. Choice box beef closed Friday at 303.93. That was up 283 on the week. And select box beef uh, closed Friday at 284.92. That was up at 98 cents on the week. Remember, guys, all of our reports delayed a day this week. So today, uh, you've got export inspections at 10, crop progress at 3 central. Uh, ethanol production will be Thursday. Export sales will be Friday. Outside markets, uh, U.S. dollars just a little bit lower. As I mentioned, the stock market is higher. Uh, bonds are up a full handle. Gold's up 10 bucks. Crude oil is down 91 cents at 71.76 in the July WTI. Everybody have a great day today. Uh, we will talk to you Wednesday.